In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about some ideas on how you can progress from an HR assistant to an HR advisor. And you might be thinking, I'm already an HR advisor, I'm already an HR business partner, I don't need this video. And that might be true, but before you leave and hopefully watch some of my other content, make sure you think about some HR assistants that you know, and make sure you share this video with them because it will help them with their careers. Lately, I've been making a lot of content which is aimed and targeted at HR generalists and HR business partners. In the future, I'd really like to get to the point where I'm making content that benefits career professionals in general and helps people to be more productive. So if you are an HR professional and there's any content that you're interested in seeing that you think would benefit your employees or your leaders, please let me know what you're interested in. With that in mind, I highly recommend that you check out a free online tool called Notion because I really think it would help your employees to collaborate more effectively in the workplace. I've put together a series of videos where I cover Notion in detail and go through some of the ways that I use it in my life. So I'll include some of those links in the description so you can check that out. So before I provide some ideas on how you can progress from an HR assistant to an HR advisor, I wanted to quickly define the roles and what is associated with each. So an HR assistant is basically the entry level role in terms of the HR career path. Some may argue that an HR graduate is on a similar level to an HR assistant, but obviously an HR graduate requires a degree, whereas an HR assistant, you don't need a degree in a lot of cases to do that role. So that's why I think that an HR graduate is more senior to an HR assistant. And in a big organization, the career path Way, will generally go HR assistant, HR graduate, HR advisor, HR business partner, HR manager, HR director, and then chief HR officer. That's generally what you would find in a lot of big organizations from a generalist perspective. And an HR assistant, they're responsible for a lot of the administration that comes with HR work. Whereas an HR advisor, they will often have a dedicated client group that they support and provide assistance to. And they'll work with the business and with leaders to provide advice on policies, and in some cases, employment legislation. And in some cases, they may get involved in investigations or union negotiations. An HR advisor is really operating at a higher level than an HR assistant. They're having to apply influence and engage with an allocated part of the business. So the HR assistant will often have a lot of bosses and they're called in to assist across the whole HR function, which is a really great way to see how HR works in an organization. As an HR assistant, when you are providing support to an HR advisor or an HR business partner, I think there are two ways that you can approach this. You can take an active or a passive approach. And a passive approach is where you do the work, but you're not really fully engaged in it. You're not putting in the effort to learn from what you're doing. In some cases, I've seen HR assistants who kind of go into a bit of autopilot mode. Whereas an active approach, that's when you're really engaged in what is going on and you're trying to learn through the support that you're providing. This simple shift in thinking, it can help you to provide better support as an HR assistant, but it can also help you to form an opinion on what you are doing. And having an opinion on the work that you're doing is a key way to progress from an HR assistant to an HR advisor. So in the past, HR assistants have provided support to me in a number of ways. And a few that come to mind are employee investigations or employee disciplinary conferences or union negotiation. And those are complicated events, complicated situations in which there's lots of information flying around. And it can be really helpful to have an HR assistant in the room who is acting as a second pair of ears to make sure that nothing gets missed. And importantly, helping to take notes on what is going on. If you are an HR assistant and you're providing support to an HR advisor or an HR business partner, when you provide your notes to them. Make sure you take the time to offer an opinion on what is going on. How this is received is going to vary depending on the organization that you're working in, the HR professional that you're supporting, and obviously how you deliver your opinion. So providing your opinion beyond just the notes that you, you've taken, it really shows that you're engaged in the work that you're doing. It shows how you think, and it also shows how you approach problem solving, which is a key part of HR. It's really a lot about solving problems. So in some cases, the opinion that you have, it might be incorrect or it might be different to what the HR professional is thinking of applying based on their experience or based on the strategy and tactics that they're wanting to apply in the current situation. And if that happens, make sure you take the time to listen and truly understand and learn from what they're doing. So all of these actions will help the HR professionals that you are supporting to see you in a different way. And they'll start to think about you beyond your current role. The next idea for you to try is to be open and intentional 
about your desire to learn. And this is closely linked to offering your opinion. When you offer your opinion to an HR business partner or an HR advisor, make sure that you make it clear that you're wanting to learn about HR as a career. Making your intentions clear will help the HR team to see you in a different way and they'll start to provide you with harder tasks and harder projects. So they'll, they'll start to stretch you a little bit, which will help you to learn and to progress your career. In terms of formal study, a degree will ultimately make you more competitive when you are applying for or even being considered for a promotion to an HR advisor role. So some organizations have study assistance programs where they will pay for some or all of your studies, but I think it sends a really strong message when you enroll and commit to your studies prior to finding out if an organization is going to support you financially, because it shows them that you're committed to your studies and you're committed to getting your degree, regardless of whether they can provide financial support for you. Because in some cases, an organization won't be able to afford it, but if you've demonstrated that you're already willing to do that yourself, it shows them that you're serious about your learning and that you're serious about progressing. If university is too much of a commitment for you at the moment, you can find a less formal mode of study. There are plenty of courses online, there's some on LinkedIn, and in the future, I'm gonna be putting together some HR courses. So I would be really interested to hear what it is that you look for in a course and what you would find valuable if you were studying an HR course online. Feel free to send me an email. You can write a comment below. You can contact me on LinkedIn or even on Twitter. I'd really be interested to hear what it is that you would like to see in an HR course so that when I put one together, I can make sure that it's going to provide you with value and going to help you in your career. So this last one is not so much of an idea, but it's something that you really need to practice, and that is to get better at job interviews. And I think for HR professionals, it can be really difficult to go through a recruitment process because I think there's a bit of an expectation that HR professionals are good at interviews, but interviewing someone well and being good in an interview, they are very different things. And often HR professionals, they can struggle with interviews because they've kind of got that frame of reference in mind. I know that when I'm answering a question in a job interview, I'm kind of interviewing myself at the same time. So I'll be thinking, oh, I've said that answer, but really I should have said something different. And so what I would encourage you to do is make sure that you take the time to practice. So find someone that you can work with who will help to mock interview so that you can get better and more consistently demonstrate what it is that you do that provides value and how you would work as an HR advisor. So to help you get ready, I have two videos that you can watch. One is a video which comes with a free template that you can use in that system that I mentioned earlier called Notion. And in that video, I will go through how you can keep track of all your career achievements and use those to prepare for an interview. The second video that I recommend that you check out is where I interview myself and I provide a bit of a critique on the interview process and the answers that I'm providing. And that will show you in more detail how to answer questions from a staff perspective and how to perform in an HR interview. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. To further help you with your career, I put together a playlist called Entry Level HR, which will help you to get started in your HR career, or if you are already in an HR career as an HR assistant, it will help you to further progress as well. I'd love it if you provided me a comment on what you found useful or anything that you'd like to see in the future or anything that you would like to see in an HR course. Thanks again for taking the time to watch and I will see you in the next video.